Hi there, my name is Gardner Bryant. I run a YouTube channel focused on free and open source software, and over the last seven years I've made a career out of video editing on Linux. I wanted to share some of the tips and tricks that I've learned in that time with you. In this episode of the series, we're going to talk about the concept of a project file, uh, how to choose the right settings for your project, adjusting project defaults, and customizing your key bindings. At its most basic, a project file consists of three parts. Uh, you have the project bin, the timeline, and the metadata. In the case of Caden Live, a project is simply an XML file that contains the list of edits that you've made against your clips and where those edits occur in your timeline, as well as any effects being applied to each edit. So when you save a file in Caden Live, what you're actually doing is writing the instructions to rebuild the edit that's in your current timeline. That's why you need to actually export a video file uh, when you're done with your edit. That process can take a lot longer. We'll talk about that in, in another video in this series. The project bin is a list of files that are included in the project. This can be audio, video, images, pretty much any multimedia element. These are all colloquially called clips. The timeline is a list of edits that includes the in and out points of every clip from the bin, as well as where those in and out points belong in the timeline. And the metadata about your project uh, contains stuff like the target resolution and frame rate of the final render. And this is basically where you have, you know, two clips. One of them is at 1080p at 60 frames a second, and the other is at 4K at 30. This meta information is how Caden Live knows which uh, of those two formats to export the final video in. Now you can select this information uh, when you first create a new project, or you can select project and choose project settings. From here, you can select either a preset profile or create one for yourself. Additionally, you can select settings, configure Caden Live, choose project defaults, and select a uh, default profile. And this will change which profile uh, new projects default to, obviously. The question is, how do you know which uh, profile you should choose, right? Like, let's again say that you have two clips in your project. Let's say one of them is 1080p at 60 FPS. And it's footage that you captured of yourself playing a video game. Let's say that the other clip is 4K at 23 frames per second. And it's like this, uh, you know, actual camera footage. In this scenario, if you were to set your project file to 4K at 23 frames per second, Caden Live would have no choice but to discard 37 frames of gameplay footage every second. And that information would be lost in the final render. On the flip side, if you set your project to be 4K60, then Caden Live would need to fill in the missing frames of your face cam in order to keep the two tracks in sync. This would result in a duplication of every frame, and every third frame would be duplicated three times. This would have the effect of making your face cam footage look choppy or uneven in the final export. That's why it's important to consider frame rates and resolutions before you start recording. Now, in this scenario where gameplay is going to be the primary focus of your video, I'd choose 60 FPS uh, just to preserve all the information that's available from the game. I wouldn't worry too much about choppiness because uh, your primary focus is going to be on the game and not necessarily on your face cam down in the corner. Also, if you choose to go with a 4K timeline instead of a 1080p, well, remember that 1080p is one fourth the size of a 4K frame. That means that if you want the gameplay to fill the entire screen in your face cam to sit in the corner, the gameplay would need to be scaled to twice its original size and might start to look blurry. I'd recommend actually setting your project to 1080p so that the gameplay footage doesn't need to be scaled. Plus, the face cam would be in the corner for the most part, so you wouldn't be seeing the full size of your face cam anyway. Every project is going to be different, and it's going to be up to your better judgment uh, to determine what settings are going to be right for your project. So let's talk about the UI for a minute. Um, while I am using Caden Live in this video, uh, a lot of what I'm going to talk about is going to be applicable to other uh, video editors. Uh, like for example, you have a project bin. Now this is where you can add and manage the files that you've imported into your project. Uh, typically, if you're using GNOME or KDE, you can just uh, drag and drop the files from your file manager right into the project bin. And in here, you can actually manage the uh, files that you have uh, that are part of this project. 
Now along the bottom of the project bin are the compositions tab, which allows you to drag and drop composition layers into the timeline, and we'll cover compositions in a later video. Then we have the effects tab, and again, we'll cover the effects in another video. Uh, but this is a, a list of all available effects that can be applied to individual clips, uh, to uh, tracks in the timeline, or to clips in the project bin. Here we have the Clip Properties tab, which shows you information about the clip that you have selected. And we also have Undo History, which shows all of the changes that you've made to this project. Now this is the Clip Monitor, which allows you to scrub through a selected clip in your project bin. You can set in and out zones and uh, import it into your timeline. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, this is the Effects and Composition Stack tab, uh, which allows you to manipulate an effect or composition's properties. Now this is one of the most important parts of the user interface. This is the project monitor. This is where you watch back your edit. You can also use the cursor here to scrub through your edit. And finally, we have uh, the project notes tab, which allows you to write notes about your project. Down here, we have our timeline. This is where you'll be arranging your clips and doing most of your edits. We can see in this example, we have V1 through V4. Uh, this is not the default. This is how I have Caden Live set up. Um, usually you'll have V1 and V2, um, but you can add more as you need. These are the video tracks, but images and text clips and titles can also live here as well. Uh, as you may have guessed, A1 through A4 are audio tracks. Any of these tracks can be given a name. You can disable individual tracks using this button. You can lock the tracks using this button so that edits cannot be made to the track. And this icon indicates whether it has effects applied to it. Keep in mind that effects can be applied to either a clip in the timeline or uh, to an entire track. This is super useful and we will talk about effects and compositing in a later video. This line here is called the playhead. The playhead shows where in the timeline you're currently watching in the project monitor. It's also used in conjunction with some of the key bindings we'll discuss later in this video. Finally, we have our audio levels. This feature allows you to adjust the volume of each audio track and compare them relative to each other. And up here we have productivity workspaces that reconfigure the interface for dedicated uh, purposes, like color allows you to do color grading, effects allow you to uh, more easily manage the effects that are applied to clips, audio allows you to do audio post-processing. However, generally, I stick to the editing tab and only go into these other workspaces when I need to. And finally, let's talk about key bindings, because I believe that key bindings are one of the most important uh, aspects of video editing if you want to become efficient at editing. I tend to use a, a handful of key bindings, um, and I find that it just speeds up my work. Now, these key bindings are uh, not the default. Uh, I have found that um, the default Caden Live uh, key bindings don't make a lot of sense to me. The nice thing about this key binding scheme is that it is interoperable with something like Olive, um, so you won't have to relearn your key bindings completely, um, just maybe the behavior is slightly different. First, X is bound to the cut all clips command, which will cut every clip in the timeline at the playhead. This is probably my most used key binding as it radically simplifies editing. Basically, you can watch back your timeline and at any point hit X and it'll place a cut in the clip. Q and W are bound to resize start item and resize end item respectively. Uh, these will move the beginning or end of the current clip to the playhead. This is super handy when you've just cut all the clips in your timeline and you want to remove a bit from the clip you just cut, or if you need to make a subtle adjustment to the current clip. Now, keep in mind that these resize commands take effect on the currently selected track, indicated by the highlighting here, and they will affect any tracks associated audio clips or any clips that have been grouped with the current clip. C is bound to the razor tool. This tool allows you to place a cut in a clip using your mouse cursor. This is useful if you just want to cut a single clip, uh, but it will also affect any uh, clips that have been grouped with the current clip. A is bound to the spacer tool. The spacer tool allows you to click in the timeline and move all clips that are to the right of the click. This is useful if you need to add a new clip into an existing edit, or if you deleted a clip from the timeline and want to close a gap. V is the selection tool, which allows you to drag, drop, and resize clips. And this is the default tool when you open Caden Live. Finally, I and O are bound to the set zone in and set zone out options. This allows you to select a certain zone in both the timeline as well as an individual clip in the project bin. 
if you've set the zones in your clip uh, in the project bin, you can insert only that zone into the timeline at the playhead using comma. So in this video, we covered the topic of projects, how they work in Caden Live, uh, the user interface and key bindings. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. Uh, if you did, maybe share this with people who might be interested in the same topic. I wanna say thanks to Purism again for having me make this video series. Uh, and thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.